All right, so welcome to uh, ratting 101. This class is going to sort of teach you what ratting is, what ships you need to do it, uh, how to progress, uh, earn you know bigger tis, ticks, do harder sites, and sort of where to go from uh, after you finish getting good at ratting these sites that I'm going to do today. So we'll start off with a uh, general overview. Ratting just refers to uh, killing pirates for their bounty. Rat is just a short form for pirate. Um, it's a pretty steady form of income. There's not too much risk really. Once you know what you're doing, you shouldn't really lose any ships unless you get hunted down by neutrals, which does happen, and I'll teach you how to kind of avoid that. <coughs> but it's very steady income, and if you're in a V and I, you can pretty much multitask ratting like you you can almost afk you just have to do a couple things every 30 minutes or so so that's the main benefit of ratting and that's why most people uh, in nullsec just vni rat you can do four or five at a time if you wanted uh, and there's also there's two main types of ratting there's belt ratting which is where you just go between the asteroid belts and kill the rats that naturally spawn there it's going to be a bit lower ticks Obviously, because you spend a lot of time warping around, there's not a lot of rats. But belt riding has a chance to spawn officers. And officers are basically like a jackpot of loot. If you get an officer spawn, you can get up to like 25 billion in officer mods. However, if you do find an officer spawn, you should not try to kill it alone. They may be, I think they're usually battleship sized, but they can kill, or they can tank sometimes up to like two or three carriers worth of damage so you definitely can't take it alone you gotta take it out with a very specific composition the other main type of ratting is anomalies in every system there's gonna be anomalies that spawn and you can warp to them directly without having to probe them there will be rats and you just kill them all to finish the site that's the standard way of ratting because those sites you know infinitely respawn it's really steady isk and uh, you know, it's pretty good takes. There is one other form that can be considered ratting, which is doing escalations. But I'll talk more about escalations later. We won't be covering that here. <coughs> um, in the MOTD, all the fits I linked, like the destroyers can only do the belt rats. Destroyers can't really do combat sites because they don't have enough tank. However, since you're all in vexers here, uh, we can do a combat site. So we will be doing one uh, toward the end of the class. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah. So ticks uh, refers to the money you make. Every when you kill rats, you don't get the money immediately from their bounty, but it gets added to a sort of pool that's. It'll keep track of how much bounty you're owed, and every twenty minutes it'll pay you out. So when you get paid out for a rat bounty every twenty minutes, that's called a tick. Generally. Uh, a very well-skilled VNI doing the right site can earn about 18 to 19 million per tick. So that's almost 20 mil per 20 minutes, which is almost like 60 mil an hour. That's like the peak of VNI reading. With sort of entry-level skills, you can maybe expect 11 to 13 mil ticks, so half that, maybe 30 to 40 mil an hour. But it's still it's still going to be very good. Yep. Uh, I don't really think there's too much more to explain here in, in the dock. So everybody, go ahead and undock and stop your ships. We're going to do some belt riding first, just so you sort of understand what it's like. So I'm going to warp us to an asteroid belt. Oh wait, stop. Everybody stop the warp. Stop the warp, sorry. Control space, stop that warp. Everybody stop in time? Okay, good. Uh, I accidentally warped at 100.
take this work instead. Sometimes the rat or the belt will have rats, not always. So, uh, you know, if you don't find one, just move on to the next belt. For belt ratting, it's it's I mean, it's going to be very simple in in vexers because they don't really do a lot of DPS compared to if you're in a destroyer. So just, you know, orbit some asteroid that's close to the rats, drop your drones and just kill them all. Yeah, like this one only has three destroyers in a battle cruiser, so once you land, go ahead and just drop drones. And, you know, you can orbit me or orbit the warp and point or whatever you want. Just kill all these rats. Generally, when you're killing rats, you want to go smallest to largest. The frigates sometimes have E-War which doesn't usually matter too much in Sasha space because it's like tracking disruption, but sometimes they'll also have points and webs. And in a Vexer, if you ever get webbed, you're in some deep shit because the way that the Vexer tanks is by going really fast and not being able to, like the enemies can't track you. If you ever slow down, the enemies are going to be able to track you and you'll die pretty quickly. So the number one thing you always have to do in a Vexor or a VNI when you're ratting is to maintain your transversal speed. All right, that was kind of that was stupid easy. So everyone, recall your drones. I'm going to take us to, uh, let's go to a port. Oh, sorry. If you're, yeah, go ahead and stop that if your drones aren't back yet. All right, now take this warp. By the way, I didn't check, but um, if you're riding in catch, you should make sure to always use Amar drones. That's the Acolyte, I think Infiltrator, and Praetor for the different sizes, respectively. EM deals the most damage to Sancho rats. <clears throat> so once you land here, uh, go ahead and find a central object to orbit and orbit that one. Uh, make sure to turn your prop mod on, and if your cap's stable, running the repper constantly, then turn that on. Otherwise, just repair your armor as you need to. But just make sure you always have your afterburner on, make sure you're always moving. Orbit something central at maybe 40 to 50k. You should see that even though the rats are all red boxing you, you're not really taking any damage. So I broadcasted an object. That's a pretty good object to uh, to orbit at 40. Just make sure you keep your speed up. And remember, go to small to large. So take out the frigates first. Mikkel, you're not going to want to use sentries here. Um, Vex, as in, in a Vexor, you should be using two heavies, two mediums, and a light. That's the composition that can get you the highest DPS. The problem with sentries in a Vexor is that you always have to be moving. And don't move like that, Mikkel. Make sure you're orbiting something central. Like that big rock in the central, the asteroid construct, orbit that at like 40 kilometers with your afterburner on. So the problem with sentries is that they stay in place, and as a Vexor you constantly have to move around. Hang on, was I looking at my own sentries? I think I was. Okay, I'm really tired. Um, disregard that.
But yeah, you should definitely be using two heavies, two mediums, and a light. I'm just sniping out some of these uh, sentries here. I'm flying a rattlesnake. It's a pirate battleship that's also frequently used for ratting, but it's honestly not a great option for regular ratting. Not really worth the money. Yeah, Tengu is a great ship for that. Oh yeah, he's he's the one you'll want to talk to if you want to know more about Tengu escalations. What happened? Yeah, um, so that happens sometimes in ratting sites. Uh, the aggro can get messed up, and then they'll target your drones. So you, you kind of have to watch your drone HP to make sure that they don't die. And if it does, if it does happen to you, you can fix it by warping to a random spot in space, ejecting from your ship, and then reboarding your ship after a minute. And that, for some reason, fixes the drone aggro bug. Yeah. Yeah, drone aggro is kind of the only other thing you have to watch out for, I guess. Um, I mean, this is this is pretty much the core of ratting. You just, in a Vexor or a VNI, you just warp to the site at range, drop your drones, orbit the something central at 30, 40, or 50, and turn your AB on and just rep when needed. Um, some other things that you can also do is drop an MTU once you warp in. Make sure you bookmark the location, but it'll automatically suck in all the wrecks of the enemies you're killing and collect their loot. Yep, it's definitely worth doing. If you're running havens or something, you can get on average five to six million in just in loot per site, and dropping an MTU and collecting it later takes maybe two minutes. So it's definitely worth dropping MTUs to collect the loot. Um, salvage is also pretty worthwhile. After you kill the rats, they leave behind rat wrecks, which uh, you know are, they're also very good salvage. One haven or forsaken hubs worth of salvage is generally about seven million. So that's also like really worth your time. Takes maybe three minutes to salvage the whole site. Careful here, there's a lot of battleships, but if you're moving at speed, they shouldn't even be able to hit you really. Interesting thing about salvage actually, if you have an endless supply of sites to salvage, uh, just a single tech one salvage destroyer can actually make more is per hour than a carrier ratting. So if you're just if you just want some quick isk and you know that there's someone ratting a lot of sites and not collecting their salvage, just ask them if you can have the sites. Most of them should be happy to let you take it. Um, in a vexer, I think. Mostly you'll be doing Forsaken Rally Points. Uh, so if you open up your Probe Scanner with Alt-P, you can see all the different anomalies. Uh, I think Forsaken Rally Points are the ones recommended for Vexor Nubro editions. They don't have too many battleships, uh, which is nice because with the Vexor's DPS, it takes a long time to kill a battleship. So normally, high battleship concentration is better because it gives they have the highest bounty, but if DPS isn't high enough, they tend to repair themselves a lot, which kind of negates your ticks. So uh, try Forsaken Rally Points in your Vexor. If you find that you're taking too much damage or you can't break some of the rats, just move down a difficulty level of sight. But also keep in mind that the more frigates there are, you know, the more likely they're to web you. Yeah, shoot.
you're still going to want to get drones skills um, because there is a missile boat, which is the Gila. It's a cruiser uh, it's, that's good for ratting. But that one is also, it's like 70% of its damage is drones and 30% is missiles. Drones are going to be your go-to weapons platform for ratting. Yeah, Gila, it's a pirate cruiser. It's pretty expensive. Um, and it also, like, you have to have drone skills to fly it well. So I would definitely... Okay, yeah, if you can use drones, then definitely... I would definitely try a VNI before a Gila, though. Because uh, Gila's can be I mean, very expensive. And you have to worry about a lot more stuff, like active repping, missile targets, reloads. Uh, Vexor Navy issue, it's a cruiser. I've linked some in MOTD of this, uh, of this fleet. But it's the go-to riding ship. Just because it can field five heavies, it's really an insane amount of damage for a cruiser. <clears throat> so this was a port, I think, and it's going to be I mean it's going to be relatively easy because we've got so many people. But this might also be a good thing for you to try yourself uh, unless you can't break the battleships here. Also notice that every time you kill a ship uh, in your little scrolling information thing, It'll say, like, this much ISK has been added to your bounty payout. And 20 minutes later, you should get the lump sum of all your earnings. <clears throat> Another facet of ratting is that every time you kill a couple rats, you'll gain security status, like Concord security status, which doesn't really matter for us, but if you need to recover some status after doing some crime in high sec, you can do ratting. But also, every time you kill a couple of rats, you'll lose standing with Sancha's nation. So, you know, be aware of that if you ever plan to go to any Sancha space or attack any Sancha diamond rats, because they will hate you. If you rat regularly, it pretty much guarantees that you'll always be at negative 10 with Sancha. Um, oh yeah, so every time you complete a site, there's a couple things that can happen in, in combat sites like this one. The first is that on the last wave you could get a true Sancha spawn, and that's kind of like a rare spawn where one of the ships will be called a true Sancha's mutant lord or a true Sancha's devoter or something like that, um, and that's referred to as a faction spawn. It's not really that much stronger than any of the rest of the ships, but it has faction loot, which can be worth anywhere from 5 mil to 200 mil. So look out for those. They also have highly increased bounties. Uh, a faction battleship, I think, is 8 mil, and it can, yeah, it can contain a lot of faction loot. So watch out for those. Go ahead and recall your drones. We finished this site. No, it's a chance. I think I think they always have something, but sometimes it's worth like five isk. Like not all faction mods are worth a lot. Um I'm gonna take us to the next site and I'll keep talking about that stuff, but once you get into a VNI, there's a trick that you should use. Um because you're gonna be wanna rat you're gonna wanna rat in havens, there's two types of haven spawns. One is where there's like a gas cloud surrounding everything. That's the bad spawn. You don't want to do sites that spawn like that because they have really bad spawn points, uh, a lot of E-War frigates, a lot of Tech 2 cruisers, which deal a lot of damage and also have a lot of health. You want to do the one that spawns as like a group of asteroids. So I'm going to try to find one here. Oh, I found one. Okay, so... 
Everyone open up your probe scanner and find the Sancha Haven with the ID MQU. And then warp yourself to it and then immediately stop your ship so you don't actually warp. Just start the warp and stop the warp. You should see a little pop-up that says there's a gate nearby or something from Aura. That's how you know that it's a rock haven and not a gas haven. Gas havens won't give you that pop-up. So you can check whether a haven is gas or rock without even having to warp to it by using this trick. So I'm going to warp us all somewhat close to the site now. So take this warp. Crow, you might want to stop this warp and warp to it at 100 or something. This is the site that you're going to want to be doing eventually in a VNI. It's got a pretty high battleship concentration though, and I, I think with normal Vexers, it's not really enough to make it worthwhile. So I just got my bounty payout, uh, you guys should have gotten it too, got like a 1.3 mil which is not much because there was a lot of downtime. When you do these sites solo in an appropriate difficulty for yourself, you should get a lot higher ticks. So once, you're, once you land, go ahead and drop your drones and orbit the asteroid at probably 40 or 50 is safe, make sure you turn your afterburner on. I'm going to broadcast the target that I'm hitting, so if we all focus our DPS, it should make it a bit easier. Make sure you guys have your prop mods on when you're orbiting. Yeah, there's not, uh, there's really not too much more to reading. Uh, it's fairly simple, especially in a Vexer. Just make sure you keep your speed up, make sure you watch your drones occasionally and watch your health. Um, so the main threat while you're ratting is going to be enemies. And there's a, there's a pretty easy way to avoid enemies. So everyone open up your local chat window and click the three little people icon at the top left for the member settings and check show member list and uncheck show compact member list. Um, we're in GE right now so it won't work that well but uh, drag the member list so that it covers like, the entire window. Uh, like the line that separates the actual chat from the member list. You don't need to see the local chat, you just need to see the member list. So drag that to be as big as possible and then click in the member list and press control A. That should select everybody in the member list and now keep your local window open to this to this window somewhere on your screen at all times while you're reading. If a neutral enters system they will you know show up as a new entry and they won't be highlighted they'll be like they'll have a dark background so it'll be very noticeable in the systems with less people if someone new warps in so you should see a new guy called chitten bricks just entered system and he's very noticeable that's a friendly so you don't have to worry but this is the easiest way to tell when new people enter the system while you're writing again you should always always have your local window open um, and your member list as big as possible to watch for neutrals. If you're in a Vexer, as soon as an enemy comes into system, start recalling your drones and align to the Fortazar or Astro House or whatever else there is in system. If um, 
if the newt does get on grid, just immediately warp off. You're already aligned, so you know you can warp immediately. Don't wait for your drones to get to you if the neutral's already on grid. It's not worth losing your ship over a couple of drones. You can also watch D scan. Um, just set it to max range, 360 degrees, and and check to see if there's enemies nearby. But as long as you're watching local, you don't need to watch D scan. So earlier I was talking about the things that can happen at the end of the site. I mentioned a true Sancha spawn. That's, uh, I think, about a 5% chance to happen. The other thing that can happen is there can be a dread spawn. So in Havens and Sanctums, I believe it is, you can get a Sancha Dreadnought spawn on the last wave. If you see a Dreadnought... Oh look, there's plus one enemy here. Bale Rainbow. We should be fine though. Um, if you see a dread spawn, just immediately leave. Don't wait for your drones, don't wait for anything, just immediately warp out, turn off your prop mod, just get out as soon as possible. Because they can like two-shot VNIs and probably one-shot Vexers. Uh, you'll have to call in someone with a capital ship to kill it for you. Uh, the third thing that can happen when you complete a site, so after you kill the last wave, there's a chance for an escalation to spawn. What will happen is that you'll get a pop-up saying, you found a mysterious signal, you should investigate this further. And that indicates that you spawned an escalation. And an escalation is basically just a generated little mini dungeon for you to run that has loot at the end. You can't do them in VNIs, so you'll need a specialized ship to do it. And if you can't do it yourself, you can sell it to someone else. Um, the only ones worth doing, really, are 6 out of 10 difficulty and 10 out of 10 difficulties. The 6s drop from rally points, and the 10s will drop from havens and sanctums. So mostly havens for, for VNIs is where you'll get escalations. Uh, and if it's in a decent system, which is like one that doesn't have a lot of enemies in it, you can sell it for like 100 mil. Anyone have any questions so far about anything? All right. Um, that's pretty much it for these sites. Just uh, you know, keep your speed up, watch your drones, watch your ticks, and watch local. Uh, Yeah, Vexor Nubro additions are going to be what you want to start ratting in, uh, in Forsaken Rally Points or lower. They don't, I think, have the DPS to break battleships fast enough to be worth it. After you... You mean like the 6 and 10? Oh yeah, like these combat sites, um, there's a chart somewhere that'll show you, but Haven is the second most difficult, Sanctum is the most difficult, uh, then below that it's like Forsaken Hub, etc. Um, there's like also, you know, there's a Sancha Hub, and then there's a Hidden Hub, and the Hidden Hub will be slightly harder than the Hub. The Forsaken Hub is a little harder than Hidden. Forlorn is a little harder than Forsaken. Um, there's a chart somewhere with all of these you can want to look up. I think this is the second to last wave of this site. Maybe. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks for coming. Looks like we got a couple enemies in here now. Yeah, we should probably not be here. Everyone recall your drones and align back to the soda factory. 
I guess it would have been better to do this in a quieter system, but you guys pretty much get the gist of it, right? While you're aligning, by the way, make sure that you keep your prop mods off. If you have them on, you align really slowly. All right, drones are in, take this warp. So you're all currently in Vexors, start with Forsaken Rally Points. Um, but once you get to VNI, you're going to want to move up to Forsaken Hubs or Havens. And the strategy to do it is exactly the same. Warp in at range, orbit, drop drone, turn on prop, keep speed up. Uh, Forsaken Hubs give almost the same ticks as Havens do, but Havens have the benefit of giving you a 10 out of 10 escalation if an escalation does spawn. Forsaken hubs will give you 8 out of 10, which are pretty much worthless. There's plenty of systems also in catch that you can rat in. I'm going to link a channel in fleet. There it is, catch crabs. In the MOTD of that channel, there's a bunch of systems listed, and those are good ratting systems because they have good security, you know, nice, it's pretty safe, and uh, plenty of good sites. Also, when you kill rats in a system, it will increase the military index, and that will boost the ADM of the system, which means it'll be harder for enemies to take the system from you. So there's also some systems that the Brave Alliance will pay you to rat in, because you're grinding the ADMs for them. To find those systems, I'll get you another link here. Go to Brave Bucks LinkedIn fleet and log in with your account and then go to the ADM boosting tab and you can see which systems will you know earn you money to rat in. That's a pretty nice little bonus on top of the actual ratting income you're getting. Uh, gem for the escalations. If you get an escalation and you want to sell it, uh, then you will here let's go through this right now. Uh, when you get an escalation, it'll appear in your agency. So everyone open the agency, it should be on your hotbar on the left. And it'll be at the very top of the list for like uh, events to do. It'll say, you know, for example, a 10 is called Centus TP Assembly Co. It'll show you the system and it'll show you the duration left. When you spawn an escalation, it only lasts for 24 hours after it spawns. Once the time is up, it will disappear even if you're currently in the site. So make sure that you know, you're watching the time on it. Uh, to, to sell it, just get in a frigate or an interceptor or something fast. Uh, warp over to the system that the escalation's in, then open the agency and click the escalation and click warp to, and it'll take you to the site. Uh, and there will be a gate on your warp in. Just right click the gate, save location, and then it'll make a bookmark and you sell that bookmark to people. And as I said, 10 out of 10s are worth like 100 mil if they're in a decent system. Uh, so after you know, after you scale up a bit from your VNI uh, Vexors, you want to go to VNIs and do Forsaken Hubs and Havens. Uh, past that, you have a couple options, but none of them are really great, honestly. Like the VNI is so good that the best option to upgrade from a VNI is to get a second account in a VNI and do both at once. If you just want to do it on your one character, you can't have another character for some reason, uh, you can try skilling into a Gila or a Rattlesnake. Uh, those are going to have higher DPS in a VNI. They'll give you a bit better ticks, but in my opinion, they're not really worth it uh, for their price tag. Like they're pirate ships, so they're going to be very expensive. The only clear real upgrade from a VNI is like a carrier. So I would definitely try to get a second account in a VNI if possible, because if I mean you can spin both of them at once, while only you know coming back to the game for 
three minutes every 35 minutes and you're making 120 mil an hour. You, you can like watch Netflix while you do it. That's what I used to do. Uh, that's, I think that pretty much covers everything. Writing overall is, is, is not too complex. Uh, just make sure you're always watching local and always keeping your speed up. Anyone have any questions about anything? Sure, yeah. Uh, if you, the right combination is two heavies, two mediums, and a light, and yeah, they're not gonna be that fast uh, in a vexer. Um, are there a lot of battleships in that site? Okay, yeah, that's, it'll primarily be the battleships that will give you trouble, because if you, you know, if they're repping your damage, or most of it anyway, you're just losing money at that point. Um, so if you, if you're in the site and you're encountering too many battleships, and you can't break them, just move to a lower difficulty site with less battleships. Um, there's not really too much more you can do about that. You could try ratting with other people as well. Two Vexers will easily break a battleship um, if you focus. And all in all, I would definitely try to say just move up to a VNI as quick as you can. Because like VNI, I mean, I know I've said it a lot of times, but VNIs are really just great, great ratting ships. Oh yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't talk about that. But let me actually. So in that Catch Crabs channel in MOTD, there's a uh, a bunch of callout channels that we made. I'll link one in Fleet now, for example, uh, like that one. And what you do when you go into the system is you join that channel. And then when you're about to warp to a site, you just type in the channel the first three letters of the signature ID of that site to sort of like claim it and so also so other people don't warp into you and waste their time and mess up your aggro. That's pretty much the only etiquette related thing to ratting. Like obviously whoever gets into a site first owns it. You can't warp in someone else's site and take it over. Um, when you drop MTUs, Make sure you don't leave MTUs in active sites because then if someone else tries to do it, you're going to steal their loot. Uh, if you see an MTU unattended in a site, technically you're allowed to just blow it up, but I would definitely try to talk to the person first so you don't, you know, get them all salty. They might just be AFK for a minute and they're coming back to pick it up or something like that. Um, also, if you get a dread spawn and you need help killing it, you can call in someone with a capital. Uh, they get the entire tick, which like which means that when they kill the dread, you you shouldn't be on grid because or else it'll split the bounty between you and them. So they get the full tick, which is sixty million, and then you own all the loot since you were the one who found the dread. So you get rights to all the loot of the dread, which usually. In my experience, it usually turns out to be like 30 mil or so, uh, but then you also get the rights to the salvage, which can be worth another 20. So as long as you don't lose your ship, getting an Escalation or getting a Dread or getting a True Sancha, those are paydays.
Oh, you don't, you won't need help to kill the true Sanchez. They're maybe like twenty or thirty percent stronger than a regular battleship. You you can definitely kill those yourself. Um, the dreads, yeah, you'll definitely want to call someone in. Um, there's usually someone willing to drop on it. I'm usually willing to drop on it. Just ask in the Catch Krebs channel as well as uh, Standing Fleet. You should be able to find someone. But also, don't just say like, oh, I have a dread at this site in this system over comms because we have a lot of spies. So, you know, I wouldn't want to drop on a dread if I knew that the simple farmers were listening in and knew that I was about to drop on the dread. Uh, just say, you know, hey, I have a dread that needs killing. Is anyone interested? And if someone's interested, then you can talk to them privately about where it is. Yep. It's perfectly up to date. Uh, and so like if you look at it in catch it's only sv5 uh, is the one circled in black so it's not like don't rat there that's a really bad idea so you, you're not going to be able to do brave bucks adm boosting in catch impasse looks like is nothing right now so don't do that uh, it looks like most of the ones available right now are in faith fabulous because that's kind of new territory for us and we need to get those adms up um Someone who did ADM grinding in a VNI told me that I think it was about five to six million per site. Uh, so they were making about 15% more than normal by ratting in there. Of course, the downside is that it's a, just a ways off, kind of, from catch. Uh, anyone have any other questions? Cool. And if no other questions, that'll pretty much be it. Dread, if you're posting that, uh, yeah, that, that looks like a perfectly fine. Oh, wait, hold on. It looks slightly different. Uh, no, no, it's the same. That one, yeah, that would be perfectly fine to rat and catch. Um, you've actually got a, a bling extender on there as well. That'll help. Yeah, that'll be able to do any combat site, uh, like the regular anomalies. Um, you're going to want to do rock havens or forsaken hubs if there's none available. But yeah. That's that's pretty much a standard VNI that can do any combat site. Uh, no, sorry, Forsaken Hub is universal. Um, so Catch has Sancha rats, so here it'll be called like a Sancha Forsaken Hub. Or a Sancha Haven or something. The naming conventions are kind of kind of whack. Like Sancha's faction spawns are called True Sancha. Um, and then all each of the different ship types, like frigates are called Corpy, uh, cruisers are called Centum, battleships are Centis. Just you can mostly ignore those. They they're not really interesting. The only uh, useful name that you need to know is True Sancha means. Yeah, you can ignore him. We're all tethered, or just dock up. Yeah. Um, any other questions? If there's no more questions, that'll be the end of this class. Uh, if you do get any more questions, feel free to always ask in standing comms or standing fleet or the Catch Crabs channel or just ask me. Uh, everyone should always be willing to help if you got questions. So that'll be it for the class then. Go ahead and dock up and thanks for coming.